<laughs> All right, so next up, um, we're going to start looking at uh, the, the division, right? So we have a deconstruct B rep, which we've uh, isolated the edges. Um, so what do we do with the edges, right? I could run an operation that's going to divide all four curves, and I'll do it for you real quick so you can see what it does. Um, edges gets plugged into curve, and you can see that it's dividing it by however many pre-programmed divisions, which I think is 10, um, are in there. So what is wrong about this? It's not giving you the points you want. Right. It's, it's giving you more than just points. Correct. Um, but let's break it down, right? So the division is only going to break it up into two. So we'll put a two in there, and we'll plug it in. Now what's wrong? Remember, this is your reference. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah, there are two extra points. There, there is a midpoint on all four edges. So what do we have to do? Hmm? Pick the one that we need. Yes, pick the one that we need. How do we do that? Man, you guys are really getting it now. How do we do that? Yes, list. Oh, so proud. I feel like your quizzes are really paying off. So we go to sets, and we go to list, and we go to list item. Um, with list item, it's going to, I mean, this is a quadrilateral, so that means there are how many sides? Four. Four. And um, if we're going to select those sides, we would use something like a slider that says zero to three. Why? You doubt yourself too much, Paolo. Huh? What? Um, no, but why did I say zero to three? I want you guys to start like... Zero counts as the first. Yes. Zero to three because zero is the first index. It doesn't Lists don't start from one. So um, let's plug it in. Let's take a look at it. So this uh, index of zero is the bottom of our rectangles. That's good. We want that. If I slide the slider over... It moves to one of the sides. So number one is a side. That's not good. We don't want that. And number two is the top, right? So we want zero and we want two. Do we have to keep a slider? We could if we want to. We can make two sliders and select it that way. Or we could just get rid of this and um, use a panel. Multi-line and just say zero, two. There you go. So now when I click that, it has both. And when I put this up here and plug that in there, now you've got the six points that you need. What questions do you have? Pretty neat stuff though, right? Okay, now I'm gonna do something here that um, is correct for this definition. And then I'm gonna challenge you to tell me why it's not correct for any definition why it's only correct for this definition, okay? So um, so let's get into the hardware, and that part's pretty easy. Um, we're just going to, actually, how, we, how did we build this? We built it that direction? Okay, so we built it along the x-axis, right? So if I'm going to extrude along the y-axis, what do I need to do? Anybody know? Close, yes, very, very, very close. I know what you meant to say. Um, yeah, in your mind it was right. You just didn't say the right thing. Um, so vector, plane, and we're going to use um, one of the planes that's going to orient a normal or a z-axis in the direction that we want. Um, so if we go for um, the we're looking at the z x yeah x z plug that in um and we're going to place a plane on the x z axis at those points so let's do um perpendicular to a vector i don't want that guide vector i think we're just going to put it on here there you go um so the when we place our points onto the XZ plane, 
it creates a plane at each of those locations. Does that make sense? So now our x and our z are oriented, or rather our x and our y are oriented to the xz plane, which means the extrusion direction is going to go along the um, z axis of that. So you can break it apart a couple different ways. You can actually deconstruct the plane, which is here. And that's going to literally give you the, the z-axis vector from that plane, if that makes any sense, or that set of planes. Um, so this one is kind of new to you. So I'm going to group this and say that these are both under vector plane. It's just a different way of doing it. It's a simpler way of doing it when you know that you're operating in that plane. Okay, so um, let's do the extrusion. I'm going to hide these because they're really annoying. Um, and let's go place a, a cylinder. So we're going to go to surface primitive. We're going to look at cylinder. And we're going to put that where? Uh, I don't know that that would work. Where are these things? Yeah, because those are just vectors, actually. Sorry, I shouldn't have done this. Um, they actually should go here. Oh, look at that. It defaulted to that orientation. I guess that's because that's the way. We didn't need this at all. Interesting. Um, hmm. I guess because that's where the surface is oriented. Um, yeah, so we just need to make them a little smaller. Zero less than, I don't know, 1.00. Um, we'll plug that into R. Something like that. And then we just need to worry about how far it's going. So this is one that you might want to create um, a slider for. Um, remember that the length is actually just going to be a standard length of, of which direction it's going, right? So positive or negative. Um, I'm just going to do 0 is less than 1.00. Actually, let me do negative 1.00 is less than 1.00 because I don't know which direction it's going to go. Plug that in. So negative is going back. And remember, just like the, the stuff that we were doing before where um, we, we didn't care necessarily what geometry was extending into the slab, um, we can just kind of reduce this to a point where it's inside, and that's plenty for us. Um, but that means that that surface is going to be flush to the front, and I actually want to extend that. Right. Yeah, you could do a negative thing, but I'm actually just going to drop another one of these on there. And oh, it's not going to let me do both. Oh, that's right, because these need to be grouped. Can I graph this? No, it won't let me graph that. Yeah, it won't let us do both at once. Um, so let's copy-paste, copy-paste. It's basically exactly the same thing. I just copied that whole thing down, and now I'm just going to make another one going out like that. Yeah. Um, you can cap them. I know I'm moving like really fast, but it's because I want you guys to understand conceptually this stuff, because I know you're, most of you are not following along. So that is how we create those cylinders. That's how you create that hardware. So it wasn't a tremendously large definition. Um, if you think about it in terms of the geometry, it's really simple, but there are a couple extra steps we had to throw in there. So this step right here was literally a direct translation of what we did um, in the previous step, which was reducing the domain. Right. You did have to deconstruct the BREP um, in order to get geometry that you could extrapolate points on. And then um, you had to divide that curve in order to get, well, you had to select those items, the only two that you wanted. Um, then you divided just the curves that you did want. And then it just became a simple process of, of mapping a cylinder. So. How's that for a recap? What questions do you have? What questions should we have? <laughs> do you think you could recreate this? Maybe not. Um, OK, so I'm going to kind of flip the script here and answer one of Chance's questions on the next one. But if there are no questions here, let's move on to a new subject.